Broadcasting the boisterous part of the fastest game in the world. So strap on your lids and lace them up, Rook. You're listening to the Barn Chirpers Hockey Podcast. Take a lap. Wow. Clap it up, boys. Clap it up. I was trying to get uh, a different type of intensity there, like from uh, <laughs> Nick Cage, like Fast and Furious when he did the oh. thing, but... You would only know that if you were watching on YouTube, which you can if you just search Barn Chippers Hockey Podcast, actually, or Gear Freaks, uh, or which that's the feed that we're on on YouTube, right? Gear Freaks. Isn't it? Well, now we have our own. Um, oh, we have our own. Okay. So Barn Chippers. Yeah. Yeah. And you can actually now listen to the show on YouTube as well. Oh, uh, see, we're we're doing all these things for, for all you listeners. Uh, and hey, if you want to talk crap to us or love us or whatever at Barn Chippers Pod on the threads, on the Instagram, you know the deal. We're all over the place. Just just search barn troopers and you can you can talk with us. Um, I wish my camera wasn't so low. So then, but I got my I got my Sabes uh, sweater on today. Old Tager. Uh, I wanted to ch- I wanted to channel a little bit of Tager. Uh, so I mean, Justin, we we came up with this idea of doing something different today because we kind of talk about the same stuff a lot uh, yeah. during the hockey seasons we're, so we're gonna do a little we're gonna do a little something different today we're gonna do a little uh we're gonna do a little sweater draft do you want to do you want to tell the people uh, how we're gonna do that today when we get there so basically it's gonna be we have uh we'll be able to select the team and the player and which version of the sweater and for example if joe selects a Tage Thompson home blue buffalo saber sweater that means buffalo is off the table i cannot draft a Buffalo sweater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're each going to get five sweaters and uh, hopefully we don't uh, steal too much from each other, but (laughs) we'll see. I purposely, I'm telling you my strategy, actually, I'm not going to tell you my strategy, but I thought about this a lot where I don't think there might be one or two crossovers, but I really thought about this one, uh, but, but I'm looking, looking forward to it. Uh, so before we get, so essentially this is going to be kind of a different show today. We're going to do a little sweater draft and then the empty net notes at the end. We do have to start off with a little bit of uh, news. Uh, and we're not going to speculate uh, because this is only the facts that we know. Uh, but an incident happened uh, with the Team Canada World Juniors team back in 2018. Uh, the We talked about this early in the show, actually, of this, of this Barn Trippers show that they were still investigations were happening. So what we know now is that five players have been ordered to surrender to the London, Ontario, Canada uh, police department. There isn't a deadline or a time window on that, but we know that five players have been ordered to surrender in regards to this uh, sexual allegation uh, charge from 2018 uh, from the Team Canada World Juniors team. And what we know is that four players now who are on the team have been uh, granted an a indefinite leave of absent, absence from their teams. Dylan Dubé, Carter Hart, uh, and then your two guys, McLeod, McLeod and Cal Foot. Mike McLeod and Cal Foot. Yeah. So um, that's all we know, and we're not going to speculate uh, any more on that. Uh, we're going to stay up to date on that uh and you know what's going on in that case but so again all we know is that we know an incident happened in 2018 we know that it involved team canada we know that those four players were on that team canada squad uh, and we know that five players have been ordered to surrender to the london ontario canada police so that's what we know um justin uh i don't know again we're not going to speculate but thoughts segue uh where, where, where would you like to where's your where's your head with that i guess uh, we'll say that without speculation so, so without again without speculation further it, it should be noted that both both the flyers and the devils put out a you know a, a short statement saying these players were, uh, were requested and granted indefinite absences from the team and we're going to offer no further comment, which is why we're saying we don't want to speculate because, I mean, it could be as simple as they took this long for whatever reason to clear their name. I mean, um, it, it 
it could be exactly what it seems. Uh, there's no way to know until more information comes out. So we don't want to speculate any further than that. But it is worth noting that the teams, both teams said, hey, no further comment at this time. To put out something that brief uh, for it to be four players, uh, signs don't look good. And at this point, look, man, Mike McLeod's quite the hockey player. Um, He's had himself a season. Uh, The dudes look like a stud at the better part of the year. But I want no parts of this. Uh, if you're going to be this kind of a scumbag, get off my team. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's important that I say that, uh, that I do not want that on my team. I don't care how good you are at hockey. Uh, there's no place for this uh, in our sport. Uh, you know, I say that I'm not a player, but like the sport of hockey doesn't need you if that's the kind of person you're going to be. Oh, but we're fans of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I agree 100%. Um, you know, uh, I don't have uh, any, I, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I just feel like we'd be ended up getting into too much speculation, but there's some, there's a good handful of current NHL players that were on that 2018 squad. So, uh, you know, I look at that roster and I'm like, wow, um, I would really like to hope that all of their names are cleared in this because uh, like you said, there's no part of that uh, on a squad. There's no part of that in this sport that we love. Uh, And just in general, as a upstanding citizen and human being, like uh, Mm. we don't need that anywhere. So uh, again, we're not going to speculate any further, but uh, we will stay tuned on any more details that are released uh, once they become available. Um, so what you can stay tuned for now is the sweater draft, the, we'll call it the barn chirpers first annual sweater draft. Maybe it won't actually be annual, but that's what we're going to call it. So, uh, (laughs) like Justin said, uh, what a segue there, like Justin said, we're going to have five draft picks. Uh, once you pick a team, you can no longer choose that team. And we are doing current teams so not any defunct squads uh and they are current players as well so uh justin i'm i'm gonna go ahead and grant you uh grant like like i'm like i'm the owner (laughs) but go ahead i want you to make your first pick because uh my first pick that i know i'm gonna do uh i want to i want to like hit you with it where you're like oh my god i didn't even think about that so okay uh, well i guess technically number five Oh, so do you want to? Oh, okay. I'm. I have to go here first because I'm afraid if I don't take this, it's like one of my most wanted sweaters. You probably already know where I'm going because, like, I complain about it constantly. I want one of these really bad, and I haven't been able to make it happen because of places and things. Uh, but here, let me uh, open up the present here, and hopefully, you don't see any of my tabs there we go (laughs) i'm going with san jose sharks current home sweaters tomas hurdle Uh, oh i could probably you know make a case for Mackenzie blackwood or or my guy fabian zetterland uh but yeah the 29 would look good in teal too I couldn't find a Mackenzie Blackwood, <laughs> so I went with Hurdle. The number forty-eight looked really good uh, in on this sweater. So, plus his last name just looks cool on the nameplate, Hurdle. It it just looks cool. But to me, it's more about the sweater period than the player. Uh, I want a San Jose Shark sweater. Uh, this the teal home, so bad. Uh, there's there's a a thing mm-hmm. here. I I can't get close enough to show it but in the tail there's like a water design and it looks so cool i okay. was hoping that, yeah. that i in to me like that, that's a selling point and i can't i of course can't get closer but uh yeah that's where i'm going first the san jose sharks <laughs> well if you're on youtube you can see this right now <laughs> yes if you're on san if you're on youtube you can see it if not nice then you gotta that's a solid pick yourself. well Also, your boy Hurdle there just scored the OT winner last night uh, uh, um, to beat the New York Rangers. Oh. <laughs> so 
he was he scored the game winning goal there in OT. So that's a solid pick. And also, speaking of the San Jose Sharks, their new sweaters are about are I've seen the uh, the San Jose's uh, Instagram that that's about to be leaked. Well, not leaked. They're about to release it uh, tomorrow, I think, on the twenty fifth. Their new uh, yeah. it's it's another black alternate, which. I mean, I'm okay with black alternates, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So, um, okay. So that wasn't on my radar at all. So you didn't steal anything from me. This one uh, has been one that off the jump I want so bad. Uh, and also this player uh, has been a standout this year. Well, at least he was. Uh, he's kind of come back down to earth a little bit. But, uh, man, you look at this logo and it is – a bajillion times better than the logo that this team changed to. Their current logo is terrible, and they definitely need to go back to this. Uh, and let me bring this up. Hopefully it works on the old share screen. I should have been doing this as I was talking. So now I'm just stalling, and this is <laughs> so that way there isn't any dead air at all. <laughs> so we're about to see this guy. But it is. My boy, hold on. Is it coming up? Can you see it? I get the feeling you're about to there yet? yoink. You're about to yoink one of mine. I know it. I know what's coming. Can you see it yet? Uh, I see us. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Wow, this it's, is great. This is great content. <laughs> Can you is it did it come up yet? Uh it it I think you might need to click on a different um on the on the tab because it's showing it's showing uh stream yard. It I've got this the stage, but I don't have the sweater. Wow, uh -oh. what is Hold on. Uh, this is great content. I stopped sharing it. Hold on. Pause. Okay. Pause real quick. Here, <laughs> this, is what we're, this is what we're going to do. I'm not even going to worry about that. I'm going to bring it up on my You're okay. I'm going to bring it up on my phone right here, and you can look at it. It is number 77, Frank Vitron. I knew it. The 30th anniversary Anaheim Ducks. I knew it. Yeah, this had to be my first pick because yeah. this sweater is so good, man. I love the purple. I love the the 3D duck bill goalie mask. Um, mm -hmm. I wish they would they would bring this back just in general. Uh, even if they brought back the mask, uh, they could go the the old school uh, Anaheim logo too with the hockey sticks. Anything is better than this stupid D Webfoot logo. And the orange and black is awful. Like, bring back the Koreas and the Solanis. Throw this new uh, uh, logo on there. And I know that I've talked about I don't love seeing the city on the uh, on the sweater, but or even or even the the team name on the sweater. I don't generally like that, but for whatever reason, this 30th anniversary slaps so hard. One more look for everybody on YouTube. Frank for Toronto, number 77. Anaheim Ducks, 30th anniversary. Uh, technically, it's my first pick, but it's five on my list. Yeah. Uh, so I had I had an Adam Henrique in the uh, the orange alternate on on my my list. So I may not select um, the orange alternate with the uh, with the old orange alternate with the old logo. Yeah, the third. Yeah, I like I like those. I mean, yeah. Again. It's yeah, it, it's I, just better than their normal stuff. I don't hate that one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't hate it. Uh okay. Well. All right. I think I got to go here next then. Well, anything is better than their regular one. That's true. Yeah. All right. Um I'm going to go with this one next cuz I think this one's safe, but I don't want to get ganked again if this ha if this team happens to be mm. on your list. <laughs> so I better I better be safe. All right, I think I know. I, I have a, I have two of them that I think might be crossover. Yeah. <laughs> uh, better safe than sorry. I've got uh, 
the Calgary Flames here. I think I need to scroll down. Damn a it, bit. dude! <laughs> Igor Sharangovich, number dude. seventeen. That that's my dude, Shango. Yeah. Um, I love God. I love flame sweaters. Uh, Lindholm was my go-to guy like for the last couple of years, but Shango just went over there and sure he he may not be he's uh, I mean I think he's kind of on a tear right now like he's he's hot right now, but he's my he my dude he's a yeah. yeah he's my he's a former dev he's doing well um you know on a team that's not doing all the, i mean they're they're hanging around um you know is he a star player no but like he has potential to break out and i'm so glad that that he went to a team where he can breathe and uh get to wear the, the calgary home sweaters are like top tier like they are one of my favorites yes. period in the league so Agreed. i had 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 to get me a calgary flames home sweater you legit ganked that one from my pocket yes I, it, it, with the only exception this was the this was the shango one that i had the winter classic that they oh, just wore the winter classic yeah the cream mm-hmm. yeah uh you know me i'm not usually a uh, a lighter color sweater guy uh-huh. um but yeah, the, the Shango the 17 looks so good and, and his name his name and the 17 look just top tier on any Calgary sweater. Uh and then the same thing, you know, I don't love I don't love the city and the and the team name on jerseys generally, but something about this cream uh winter classic one that they wore uh is is top tier. So you stole that one, so good on you. Um, yes, that's a, that's a solid pick. <laughs> okay, so I feel like I need to go here because otherwise you are going to. Uh, this one is pretty simple. Um, same thing. I, I love the number and the name on this sweater. Uh, and uh, well, I mean, it's real simple. Marcus Felino, number 17, the 72s. Oh, damn it. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, I love these 72s. Um, it's kind of crooked there. Sorry. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, my bad. There you go. Um, yeah, I, I, I just love the color scheme. I love the throwback to the North Stars. Um, I think the wild logo looks it looks great on the normal green background of a sweater, but something about this this color scheme with the, the yellow and the light green. I think just makes that logo pop so good. Um, I, I can see the, you can see the bear a lot better, I think. Mm-hmm. And, and that's yeah. the, the whole part about that. So um, yeah. And then uh, obviously I already have a flower. So I wanted to go uh, with the bruiser there, Felino. And actually this one doesn't have it, but he is one of the assistant captains. So that would have the state of Minnesota um, on the, For the uh, a. On, on the chest. I, I didn't, uh, that one didn't have it, so I didn't grab it. And oh, here we go. I got a uh, oops, just two seconds. If you're on YouTube, hold on. Here it is. Bloop. So then you get that you Minnesota go. letter. A on yeah. There. So that's my number four pick. So, I mean, obviously, you know, you ganked, you ganked, uh, I had a 72, I had Carol Ka- uh, Kaprizov. Your boy. As, as your, mine. your boy. Ah. Uh, all right. I, oh, now I so I've gotten got twice already. So I, <laughs> I've got one of my backups. I, I'm gonna have to figure out my other backup. I think I'm safe on this one. I think I'm safe on this one. Um, there's several players I could go here. Actually, several different versions of the sweaters I could go here. But if I'm going to get a devil sweater next. Mm then it's got to be my guy. It's got to be my captain. It's got to be a Nico Heischer red home sweater. Um, I love that. Yeah. You can't go wrong. wrong. You can't go wrong. Right. Like I like the Jersey Jersey sweaters, the, the, the black alternate. Um, but I don't like Heischer's in, in the Jersey Jersey. Like for some reason it looks all cluttered up with the C, you know, I even Jack Hughes, like maybe, I think if I was to get one of those, it'd be a Mercer 91. But um, it, it, 
our our look is classic and you know the only thing that's really kind of changed over the years is is the tail stripe we've got the thin black uh tail stripe right now um again i love the cap and like the the team is night and day with and without him like you could tell he's the heart of the team Mm -hmm. and uh sure i'm sure this one was safe i probably could have waited till longer but i did not want to risk it after i've gotten got twice so (laughs) yeah you can't (laughs) touche uh i never i don't know if i ever asked you do you like the uh that uh version of the dev sweater where they had the green green and uh yellow in the uh with the red so the so the the first version of the reverse retro i liked uh which was mostly green and then like there's a throwback version like that you're talking about again it's not my favorite like to me like to me our home reds are just classic like you can't you can't beat the devil's home in a ways like they're just which is why i'm okay that they don't have like a million thirds um our home in a way are just practically perfect so Mm -hmm. i don't need to see you trot out you know the the reverse retro 2.0 where we went like kansas city scouts it's like no these are fine but like what we got right now is far superior so let's just keep rolling those out yeah i I don't remember if i ever asked you that that's the other thing that i do actually like about the about new jersey's sweaters and there's a handful of other teams too is that the letters are very proportional to the sweater itself I don't like this this massive letter uh, on the chest, right? Uh, and especially mm-hmm. it, it matters with with the logo, like uh, you know, depending on how how big the logo is, that that determines the size of uh, you know the letter. But I don't like when there's a whole lot of space. So, and I know I just showed Marcus Felino with the state of Minnesota letter. I like that because it's a specialty jersey. But in a, in a regular jersey, just this massive letter is a real like eyesore to me, and especially as you know, they start getting more sponsors and stuff now too. You start looking like the KHL, like, oh my gosh, I, I hope that doesn't, doesn't ever happen, but that's a whole other rant. Um, and speaking of rants, uh, I, with my third pick, I really love the normal home sweater of this team. It is so clean. Uh, I absolutely love that. But this sweater that I'm picking uh, is, I guess it's a, I don't remember it wasn't a reverse retro. I think it was just an alternate. Um, but again, speaking of a rant, uh, I have to go with my guy, Miko Rantanen, the Colorado Avalanche alternate sweater, number 96. Uh, I absolutely love that alternate logo of Colorado. Uh, and just the, the the dark blue with the purple, I think just slaps so, so well. Uh, and just a real quick for our, our YouTubers, uh, if you're not sure, the, the regular the regular Colorado is so clean. Just it is abs- absolutely clean. Uh, I, I love that one, too. But I wanted to do something different for this third pick. So I got that. Miko Rantanen, number 96, uh, Colorado Avalanche, alternate jersey. It's weird. Like, I for the longest time, I hated Colorado's sweaters. And I think there was, like, you know, at the turn of the century – they were kind of a rivalry because we met in the cup. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I, I had these harsh feelings toward the abs. Plus, you know, they took the Deeks um, and they had, they used to have the foot on the, yep. on the shoulder. Yep. I hated, I hated that foot. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like, I, I can't deny like for a team, normally I'm, I'm all for like make changes, make changes, but the abs have managed to have essentially the same look since whatever year they left quebec 96 i think Mm -hmm. and it's fine like and it it has actually aged better like than than most sweaters that that kind of stay the same they've had the same logo they just kind of slightly altered i think they went to a little lighter blue um yeah and to your point like that third sweater i love that third sweater because it's a different logo uh I think it's I think it's actually a nod to the old Colorado Rockies, which is our the you know who yep. the devils became the devils. Yeah, overall it's just uh it's it's a solid sweater and just just overall. So I had to had to get that one in there. I thought that you might have uh Mac Dog as a pick, so I had to uh get that one in there before you uh stole it from me. 
So here's another one that I'm going to get off the board just in case. This is a player you and I have have talked about a lot on this show specifically. I clicked the wrong button. Um, you, oh If you have this guy, you might have a different version of the sweater. I might be okay here, but this is another case of better safe than sorry. Let me let me get this one off the board. Matt Kutch, uh, Matty Kutch, oh. reverse retro Florida 2.0. Uh, I love I love that sweater. I don't have it. it. I, I didn't pick it, but I, I love that sweater. It is so so like I don't know. There's a couple players I'd I'd consider from Florida. Uh, you know, Ekblad, um, Montour. Like th- there's a couple guys, but something about the way Kachuk 19 looks on this specific sweater was like, no, that's the one I want. Uh, Corey and I talked about this on Gear Freaks when when these came out. Like I kind of wish. They would that Florida would either switch back to the Leaping Panther or switch mm-hmm. to this as the crest Agreed. because yep. the the what they got going now like I like the sweater but I I hate the crest that they have now it's too busy and and I think the uh, and again that to your same point I I don't mind the crest and again it says Florida on there which again mm-hmm. I'm kind of I'm kind of contradicting myself because I don't like that generally but. I like that crest. I think it's really that stripe that goes across like the, the rib cage area that really just, there's something about it where I'm like, ugh, just have the crest, take the stripe away. But that's a kind of a whole other conversation. But I didn't have, I didn't have uh Kachuk in there. Cause I was like, I bet Justin's going to have that one. <laughs> and if I wasn't going to pick it early, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't pick it. So, uh, okay. Okay. Cool. 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 So we're down to the final number two, right? Yeah, second pick. Yeah. Okay, man, this is a tough one because I know you don't have either of these two that I would put in the number two slot, but I almost need to do my number one because you might have this one. So this <laughs> is actually really tough because I don't really want to, I don't technically want to make either of these other ones number one. God darn it. Okay. I need to take this one because I feel like you may have a version of this on yours. Um, this is a team that, uh, man, we didn't uh, we didn't know what they were doing. But they have shown out and shown up this year. And this is an alternate that I absolutely love because, hey, I'm wearing a Tage Thompson uh, right now, the home blue. I love blue. This is uh, – I was going to pick another number. I was going to pick another 17 or a nine or a 37, but I went with this one because of the way the letters are, because of the way the numbers are. It's Winnipeg Jets alternate blue, Nikolai Ehlers, number 27. That's I, absol- I absolutely love this blue. And the normal home blue for Winnipeg is growing on me because I've watched them more and yeah. seeing them do so good this year. I- I'm getting a little bit more of a uh, an affection for uh, the Winnipeg Jets. Um, so I do love the regular, the regular blue that they have, but something about this blue light blue, um, and the font of jets just, it does it for me. I I like it. So, uh, again, one more time for the YouTubers there. Well, again, they've done, they've done the thing that, that is please never do. They, they, they just did the team name and curse of a crossed and like for a hockey sweater for me, that's a big no, no, but normally. It, but it works <laughs> and it shouldn't. Uh, I, I, you know, certain teams can get away with it. I think it's a combination of the colors and, and the actual way they wrote it in cursive, like the actual font. Um, for sure. And there's, and the, there's a, go ahead. There's a bunch of jet sweaters you could pick from this year. Cause there's the, the reverse yeah. retros, like uh, the, the, the old heritage, right. The old heritage classic is great. They came out with, um, I forget what it what they called it this year, but they have a different alternate with like all the stripes on it. It's that one's world class. I love that thing. And like you said, this year, I guess it's because I've watched so much Winnipeg Jets hockey. Yeah, that that's this, great this too. one, this one in white, I don't hate either. And again, I I, I like the darker colors, but um that that one's top tier as well. But the uh the the regular home and away Winnipeg Jets sweaters and I, I think you're on to something like just from watching them this year I think has softened me on it 
I, it's it, it again it's it seems so plain you know because it's just got the 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 jets logo um on the crest but it's it's i like it i <laughs> something about it just works for me I think also with the going back to the one that I picked, the the Jets and cursive, I think I just really love that they didn't do diagonal like the stupid rags or like how Pittsburgh did. Even Colorado did a did a slant. Yep. I think everybody's done the slant at some point. Like yep. I absolutely hate it. It is so boring. Like do something else. You know what I mean? Like yep. I would I would rather you do like uh around around the uh the collarbones i'd rather <laughs> see that than the diagonal ever again truly um i just i hate that so much um, really really the rangers are the only ones who have an excuse because it's they it's been that way forever it's original you know, yeah okay yeah I, I don't like it <laughs> i i don't like it for them but at least that's what they've always done except for you know the sidestep in the 90s with lady liberty Right. Uh, this is the other one that you were talking. That's the one that you have, right? Yep. This yep. Reverse retro. Yeah. Yeah. That one's clean. That's the one. the, there's a lot to, to choose from, right. from the Jets. Fine. Final pick, Justin. All right. So again, this is this is one really I had is, to yes. <laughs> I had to pick on the fly here. Uh, I don't think I'm in there trouble of you. <laughs> because you stole one like you stole yeah uh but i i think i'm safe here but this is one of the this is one of those situations where it's like if i don't take this then i don't get it so and it's one that i want really bad <laughs> it's hilarious i'm looking at this before i share the screen i'm looking at this and this is like a, a very jacked version of it <laughs> but uh I'm going with um last year's reverse retro for the Vegas Golden Knights as a matter of fact i think you oh. actually said you don't like the the uh the font the fo yeah yep but, the, but these mean... things oh they scream vegas to me and the fact that they glow in the dark is such an awesome like advantage i think the colors work i think to disagree with you i think the font screams las vegas like everything about this thing is las vegas to me and it's the one of the reasons I couldn't connect to Vegas as a team until these was because when I looked at their sweaters, I know it's dumb, but when I looked at their sweaters, I didn't see Vegas. I just saw, you know, random creative team hockey sweater. Yeah. But yep. but these coming out made me much more accepting of, you know, you have the Leonard one. Like their their regular uh the they have the pewter is nice, the gold is okay. Um, but to me, this is the this is the best of the bunch for the for the Vegas Golden Knights, and I went with Mark Stone so I could get to see. Yeah, no, I mean, again, I so to, to the first point being of that, um, you know, I can I can understand that, and looking at it more, I, I like it having the the C on there, and then seeing how Stone is very clear, and then the numbers are. Uh, like you said, the way that you said it, something kind of clicked to me. Like it is very Vegas. It's very like in your face, very showy. Uh, and seeing Stone, the nameplate there being very clean, and then the numbers being like in your face, I do. I can I can see why why that is is a good sweater. Um, and like you said, the the kind of the creative team logo. Like I, I do like that different, even though again it's di it's diagonal, Ugh. but it's it's not terrible. Like it's. Uh, it works for for Vegas, and then it is glow in the dark, so that's fun too. Uh, I guess my second point of that, this just goes across the board. It's like I, even if like like a Rasmus Dahlin, I, I I love seeing Rasmus Dahlin play, but for me, I'd rather either have the C or no letter at all. Like I don't, I, for some reason, I don't like seeing the A on a on a sweater. It's for it's something in my brain, I'm like, no, give me the C or give me nothing at all. I don't know what that is. That's just a random fun fact. I to kind of like at, this is a weird addendum because like I think I think I agree with you because our assistant captains I believe were Jack and uh, Andre Palat, but weirdly both of them are injured and Bradder and uh, Eric Halla got the A's and I saw them I think it was the Columbus game last week and they had the A's and I was like. That looks good on them. 
which is weird because like mm-hmm. like you i'm like ah, i don't care about the a the a is dumb you know it's give me the c or nothing sure uh but so i guess maybe maybe when it happens mid-season it's kind of showing that hey we think these guys have shown leadership uh and so it's like you're you're seeing kind of like progression it, it, progression in in the, in their their playing and and what the team thinks of them so for sure okay this number one pick now okay i mean i just i just think this looks so clean and i mean any washington fan listening is going to smite me for picking this but i mean the guy is he's he's gonna go down as one of the best ever and Uh-oh. i know what's happening <laughs> i know what's happening <laughs> i can't believe you're gonna do this with my number one pick, I am picking the 2022-2023 reverse retro Sidney Crosby. I knew it. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Penguins. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But look at how wow. clean that is. Look at the how Robo clean pen. it is. Like, the RoboPen just sits so well. And again, we're talking about proportions of the letters. Proportion wise, good. The nameplate sits perfectly in the middle. Big numbers. Uh, it just is clean. And again, this season, I've recognized how great Sidney Crosby is. Truly, I'm, I'll give him his stick taps. Like the dude is insane. Um, so if, again, Sidney Crosby's my number one pick. I know. <laughs> I know. Why, old man? I know. Well, let me, know. let me ask you this, like. Again, as a Caps fan, you know, somehow you're able to do something that I'm not able to do and kind of detach yourself from like the the way the team's playing. Like I, my mood is definitely like defined by how well the Devils played, which is, (laughs) it's not a good, it's not a good place to be. But it, it is part of what you're seeing in Sid kind of like. Obi's not having a great year. Like they're, you know, one A, one B. Like they, that's kind of been the rivalry for you know however long at this point. Like, is that part of it? Like you're seeing Ovi struggle and yeah, Sid's not. I, th- I think it, I think it definitely does because you know while I I definitely still think that Ovi can break Gretzky's record record and Ovi is still going to be my favorite player. Uh, you know, but yeah, seeing that. Ovi, they're they're the same age, Sid and Ovi. Ovi seems like a very slow 37 going on 38, while Sid seems like 37 going on 25. (laughs) You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. being able to see that this year, I'm just like, dude, I mean, and truly, they have pretty much the same team around them. Yeah. I mean, in, in a way, right, obviously... Sid still has Malkin. Sid has Latang, uh, but those guys are old too. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you're kind of getting the same team around you, uh, struggling. But Sid, yeah, he's just uh, this is blasphemy. But Sid is just doing it better this year, truly. And I've <laughs> again, I've just realized, like, wow, I, I this dude is one of the best hockey players to ever play the game. You know what I mean? And he's. He puts the team on his back to try to win the game. So you have to respect to me. I'm like, I, I, I got to respect that. Like he does everything he can to get his team to win while I can't always say the same thing about Ovi right now. You know, he, he's just slow out there. So um, do you have any uh, honorable mentions? Do you have anything else in the tank that you were going to pick? Well, no, because all the things that was on my radar, you ganked. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, so I, I did have one other uh, possibility in case that you took one of my other ones. Uh, again, we're, we're going with a clean blue. Uh, the logo and the letter just s- sit perfectly. Same thing that I just said about Sid. It's Stammer. 91. The the home, home blue for the Tampa Bay Lightning. 91. It's funny that you say that because like the second I kind of said that I didn't have anybody, I was like, I should pick somebody from Tampa. Because uh, begrudgingly respect the hell out of the Tampa Bay Lightning. And, uh, you know, it would probably be Stammer for me as well. But, like, there's a handful of guys over there that that I'd be like, yeah, like a Vazzy, number 88, looks really good. Yeah. Uh, and Brain, that, Brain Point. 
Braden Point for sure. Yeah, and like that that blue is just it's it's a beautiful blue. And I, I used to decor like I used to whine about how simple their sweaters are, like because it's just the crest. And now I look at it and I'm like, no, like that's please don't do anything extra. Like it's actually right. kind of perfect the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, especially, um, you know, I wasn't ever a fan of the actual lightning, uh, you know what I mean? The the originals, um, I, I wasn't ever a fan of that. It always just looked too busy to me. So mm -hmm. uh, same, I'm, I'm glad that they just have the crest and, and let it be uh, what it uh, what it is. So um, cool. Well, that was our uh, first Barn Trooper sweater draft. I think it went uh, pretty well. well. We'll probably do that again at some point. Uh, so uh, you want to uh, pull the goalie here and, uh, and uh, start heading out? Yeah, let's let's see what's what's shaking this week. Uh, first, you know, we got a couple of signings that we're going to get to, but the biggest piece of news I think um, that I saw this today, Sportsnet is reporting that the Smith Entertainment Group, who are the owners of the Utah Jazz, asked the NHL to quote initiate an expansion process end quote to begin to bring a team to the state. <sighs> Initial thoughts, <laughs> Justin. Uh, well. My initial thought is expansion is going to happen whether we want it to or not, right? Like, probably true. I, yeah. I, and Atlanta's getting one, like almost guaranteed. It's Atlanta's going to get a third shot. Uh, I, let's see what Utah's got. You know what I mean? Like, again, I would prefer Quebec. I would prefer anywhere in Canada where they love hockey, where it, where it has a chance to succeed. Um, but let's see what Utah's got. Like, we we haven't seen that yet. Um. I'm not again. Atlanta is almost almost a foregone conclusion. At least yes. let's put, let's 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 see somewhere where it actually gets cold and there's right. a chance that people are going to like hockey. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. Like you to your first point like expansion is going to happen regardless of our true feelings about it. We're never going to change that. Uh so, you know, if if Atlanta is getting one then yeah, we need we need another one in the West Coast to even things out. If you you can't put two East Coast, you know, Quebec's in the East, so uh, you can't do that. So I agree, Utah is essentially the best wintry spot in the West that we can put it. Um, I don't want another California team. Uh, I mean, the only other thing I would think is maybe Portland, but anyway. Um, yeah, Utah. Yeah, let's 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 see what happens. I don't love it, but let's let's see what happens. Um, speaking of the West, uh, the Edmonton Oilers have won their 14th game in a row, and they uh, I couldn't actually pull up the NHL app because it's been glitching today. Oh, okay, it's working today. So the Edmonton <laughs> Oilers are now third in the Pacific, Justin. They have ousted the LA Kings out, out of that spot. So uh, two questions for you. First one. Pass or excuse me, uh, over under Edmonton finishes third in the Pacific at the end of the year. Hmm. Man, that's raw because they still, Vegas has slowed down a little, but they won last night. Um, but Vancouver hasn't. Uh, you got to imagine. I can't imagine Vegas slides much further. So, like, to me, it that screams push. I know we're not supposed to take push. <laughs> but I, I can't imagine that they that they go cold and go under third. But it's – I guess that's much more imaginable than them continuing to, like, tear through. And I guess I – if I can't take push, I unfortunately have to take under uh because i think it's more likely that they get fourth than second yeah i mean uh you know Stu has been playing out of his mind um he actually just um broke grant fewer's record of uh wins in a row uh for the edmonton oilers so Stu started the year with like a 889 save percentage he is on like a 952 uh tear right now during this winning streak so he's playing out of his mind. The team is playing out of their mind. Uh, I, I think, I think it, their best bet, I think, would be 
to either they need to take over number one or they need to drop down to four because they don't want to play Vegas. They don't want to yeah. play Vegas, truly. Um, but yeah, I think I don't, I think they're going to come back down to earth a little bit. So I'm going to also say under and say they're going to get that uh, second wild card slot when it's all said and done because they're eventually going to lose. Um, and how they respond to that obviously is gonna is gonna you know be the be the tale. Um, but we talked about it last week, I, I believe. Uh, Corey Perry did sign with the Edmonton Oilers for one year, league minimum seven seventy five. So they're adding a depth guy that has been proven on teams. He can literally play any position, any line on that forward group. So. If you're the Edmonton Oilers, that is a great signing for you that you can plug a guy in, a veteran guy, literally on the first line or the fourth line and get some production from him. I hope this means he's good to go. Yeah, um, like we talked about last week. Agreed. So, I, I, you know, at the at the risk of being repetitive, I hope this means he's good to go. Uh, if he is, that this is, this is a tremendous signing. Like this is – like there – it – I don't think it gets any better for Corey Perry. Like this is as close to stress-free as you can get. Um, I'd say team, so. Yeah. The team is hot. Like you've pointed out, he can go on any line. Uh, there isn't going to be that much pressure on him to produce, but because of that, he may, because of that lack of pressure, he might be able to, or he's probably going to produce. Uh, you have two of the best players in the league. Like again, arguably the best players, so if if he's good to go, then this is the best situation for him. I, I can't I can't think of a better one. And I mean, he's won multiple Stanley Cups now at this point. So you have that veteran presence on that team. Uh man, if you can shore up your defense and you can make sure you have a solid goalie, golden man, truly golden. Yeah. Um yeah. Another t- another guy that signed Shane Pinto. He served his 41 game suspension for that gambling uh, thing that <laughs> that he allegedly did, or somebody on his phone did. Either way, but he signed with the Ottawa Senators one year league minimum 775. Uh, this will bring him. I still believe he is going to be a restricted free agent, so Ottawa will have to figure out what they will do with him at the end of the year. Uh, but he, you know, first game back, he was a uh, plus two and had an apple. So. Uh, Ottawa, I guess I'll, I'll position it like this, um, buy or sell that Shane Pinto being back in the Ottawa senators lineup makes any different at all, any difference at all. Well, or excuse me, I'll, sorry, I just asked you buy or sell. So buy or sell Shane Pinto makes a difference to the Ottawa senators season. Sell. Uh, I, I think, <laughs> I think you put it, put it perfectly in our text thread. Uh, you, you took a screenshot and I didn't notice the circle initially, but uh, the Ottawa Senators with 30 points on the year at at the time, just embarrassing, yeah. just embarrassing. And there is literally not, there's what, seven points behind Columbus. <laughs> so like, who well, they're is? T- they're tied with Columbus now with 37. Oh, okay. So yeah, but ugh, like <laughs> 30, 37 points in 43 games is awful. And so to to that point, the New Jersey Devils, I'm only saying this because they're they're the ones just outside, have 51 points. So playoff, you can, I mean, again, unless unless you go on an unreal heater, like Edmonton just did 14 games, you got to rip off 14 games on the other side of break. Uh, I don't see the Senators team doing that. Um, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm I'm selling just because that's the easiest thing to do. Because I cannot figure for for the life of me, I cannot figure out this Ottawa Senators team. I wish I could be contrarian and buy that, but I absolutely can't. Because looking at their record, they can't even get a loser point. Justin, they have one loser point in 43 games, one. Yeah. So they yeah. are getting their they're losing in overtime. They can't, or excuse me, they're losing in regulation. They can't even get a game to overtime. They can't even get a game to a shootout. They can't even get a loser point. Justin Columbus has nine loser points. (laughs) You know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, 
Yeah, it doesn't make what I mean. <laughs> let's try again next season, boys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that sucks to say, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm selling that as well. Uh, whew. Patrick was back in the league, Justin. The New York Islanders lose to the San Jose Sharks. The next day, they fire Lane Lambert. Patrick Waugh is hired, uh, and we see in practice he's yelling and barking at him, uh, and they come out the next night and they win. Um, th- I think this is – I'd hate to see the Islanders win, but Patrick Waugh is a, a, a proven coach. He's he's won multiple Memorial Cups in the QMJHL dealing with, you know, kids essentially, you know, teenagers. So, I mean, if he can motivate them – if these guys can listen to him, these old, boring guys on the New York Islanders, maybe they'll win some games. I don't know if – so they, they win the first one out with, with Wah. Last night they played the Knights, and thank goodness they lost because yes. I I need that in my life. I need I need the Isles to lose right now. But um, they – I mean, they still look boring, but they looked le- a lot less boring. Um, they looked fired up out there, uh, and that makes a difference, man. Like it, they went from a team that's like, we just have this goalie, and you know he's going to do everything. To yeah. no, we're a hockey team. Let's let's go play hockey. I, you know, sometimes it really is that simple. Yep. Um, yeah. To, to that same point, you know, I watched that, uh, that first game out, I watched the highlights of it. And like you said, I feel like the team is still boring, but there was definitely some type of pep in their step. And again, I was only watching the highlights, you know, so they only, I didn't see the whole game, but there still seemed a little bit of pep in their step. Uh, is that the new coach hire, you know, initial push probably. And Patrick was a very intense guy. So you will see if they can, you know, carry it on, but, uh, really they need a guy, they need a superstar or at least the, the a, a good player. Cause they have a roster full of guys that are just decent. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Really? So maybe they'll, maybe they will be buyers at the uh, deadline. I don't want the Islanders to Islanders to do anything. Uh, I've said this before, but um, if they're going to do anything, they need to get some better, uh, better talent on the roster. Uh, and the last thing that I want to close on, which I think is pretty cool and also a very huge uphill battle, I think, but, uh, Egypt is looking for women age 16 plus for their first ever national team. Uh, I love to see that the game is expanding all the way over to Egypt. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a really big uphill battle for them, Yeah. but at the same time, I love to see it, that this has been put out, that they're looking to, to, you have a national team stick taps for the for the for the bravado stick taps for the attempt uh egypt of all places i would have never thought you know yeah hockey there well i mean you know like i wouldn't have thought 20 years you know 10 15 years ago is hockey in vegas yep uh so like man like let's let let it be the world game hockey's supposed to be for everyone uh why not egyptians yeah, why not? Uh, why not? I, I, I want to tag something onto this. It's it's kind of preachy, so I apologize. Um, Go for it. It kind of it because I think this is a good place for it because it they're they're trying to start a women's team. Um, I've been watching a lot of PWHL games. Actually, right now I prefer PWHL games to NHL games. Um, but one of the common things I always see going in into the into the chat which is a mostly positive experience like 95 percent positive yes, experience it is it's, very it positive. is a blast in there but occasionally you have the guy you know the one guy who goes oh why are they why are they wearing cages okay so whatever man but then you have the guy the the guy who is complaining about like the the supposed talent discrepancy and let's uh, let's let's say it's true it's not but let's say it's true let's let's allow that negative thing to be true for for a moment how can you compare an nhl player who has been getting paid to do ho- play hockey as a job for x amount of years to a woman who has been paid to, for hockey as her job for 2 months yep 
you, you can't like imagine imagine where this league first of all the the, the talent and the, the ability on in this league should not be understated like these are quality hockey games being played they're very fun to watch and it's it's really good hockey but if you want to allow that to be part of the conversation can you imagine what it's going to be in three seasons when these women have been being paid to be their job to play hockey for three seasons <laughs> i yep. the, the fact that they're that they're this good now <laughs> speaks volumes for where it's going to be in a couple seasons and the best thing we can do as hockey fans is get on board and support it so it can make it to three seasons so stop being a negative uh nancy expletive deleted agreed yeah and i mean to all of your points um they had a month and a half two months maybe of training camp for all these players that have never most of them have never played with each other. So mm -hmm. not only there's that to, to get that chemistry, but also look at the scores so far in the PWHL. There hasn't really been any blowouts. So these are very competitive games. Look at the NHL. There's blowouts every single night. Look at the Sharks. Um, you know what I mean? So if we're talking about competitiveness, uh, seems to me if you look at the scoreboard, these PWHL games are far more competitive than the, these men playing in the NHL, right? And again, to that same point of this dude, uh, whatever, you know, yeah, they've been playing this game and getting paid for it for many, many years and they're getting blown out. So where's their compete? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I agree. The best thing we can do is support um, this league who, I mean, they're almost halfway through the season now at this point, because there's only 24 games, I believe, being played mm -hmm. this season. So imagine having giving them a full off season, a full training camp season and then getting into a full-blown season um it's already this good i can't wait to see what uh version 2.0 looks like absolutely ab so flogging and, and and to your point to, to hammer the point home before we wrap here uh the games have been going into overtime like almost every game it feels like has is is going into overtime because teams aren't going out there getting blown out and laying down they're fighting to literally the last minute uh i mean i watched you know one of the original things we were going to do today was like a game you watched a, a fun game you watched over the weekend and my answer was going to be toronto and montreal from pwhl because Mo montreal came out was leading like 2-1 most of the game toronto just kept chipping away pushed into overtime and win wins in overtime mm -hmm. uh the way Toronto has been playing, they could have just laid down and taken a two nothing loss. They didn't because competitive. Sorry, Joe, yeah. I didn't mean to take take us that direction, but no, no, dude, I, I'm I'm here for it. You know, I love com com to compete. You know what I mean? I, I, you got to have compete. I I whether we're talking about hockey, we're talking about anything else. Like if I don't see any compete, and I'm like, I I'm not into this. Where's where's the compete? Where's the fire? You know what I mean? Uh, and to that point, I'm just kidding. I don't have another point. I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to get out, out of here. Uh, we'll probably be back to regular stuff next week, three stars and all that stuff. And you'll probably hear me chirp uh, somebody because that's what we do at the Barn Chirpers. So uh, until then, keep your head up, play to the whistle, stick taps and sellies, boys. Clap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.